follow, which girls, that'd be your generation. There is a, a, a relationship that's being matured, and that relationship is, as it is matured, there is a natural overflow of the desire to share it with others. And so this is what, this is what comes to us. I, I, um, I have not been able to get out of Luke 11, and um, so I just gave up and said, okay, I, I read it several times, and I, and I just, here is the, when you have not been properly fathered by a spiritual father, and many of us in this room never had that privilege, we just, we just kind of were orphans in many ways, except by Holy Spirit, but in terms of having someone, somebody wrapped up in that apostolic, true father anointing, we missed it. And if you were a woman, you really missed it because if you had any kind of aspirations to serve the Lord, you were, for many of you, you were absolutely dismissed as being out of order. But that is not the order of the heavenly father at all. There is no male or female uh, to the heavenly father. We are all sons. We're all a new creation. We're all somebody we've never been before so as I was thinking about that I thought um, it's terrible to be fathered by a slave are you hear what I'm telling you it's terrible to be fathered by someone immature in the love of the Father that doesn't know the nature of God. It's, it's a bad thing because you get framed up in the wrong theology. Because we are becoming, under, we're understanding that the true apostolic fathering anointing is, is modeled in Paul. Come on. He is the, the, the father of the New Testament. Even more than, even more than John because uh, their, their functions were a little bit different. But at any rate, so I'm here to tell you that I believe that the Heavenly Father is fathering a whole bunch of us fatherless five-fold ministry gifts. Because if, if you're not equipped with a five-fold ministry gifts that knows the Father, we will never arrive at the fullness of the measure of Christ and the image of the Father. Talk to me. It's the truth, isn't it? Would you like to be fathered by the Father? I would. So this is, hap this is happening. This is happening. And, uh, and because God, God knows that some of us pioneered and we broke out of the status quo when we were born again. And there wasn't a place for us. There wasn't a place for us because we threatened the status quo and, and we did not know yet the greatness of the inheritance of the father's love so let's get back to uh, Luke 11 yes Luke 11 so I'm in Luke 11 and Luke 11 makes it very uh, uh, there's a statement in Luke 11 which I'm, I'm just going to talk to you and you can read Luke 11 yourself it wouldn't hurt you a bit and you can read it out loud I'm telling you when you read stuff out loud you get he quickens you when you read it out. When you hear the word of God coming out of your own mouth, hello, like, yes. the, like the song. I was thinking about that. Those songs are fitting right in with me. So at any rate, so they make, he makes the, Jesus makes the remark that people are looking for a sign. Now we're still looking for a sign. But he says that the, and he said, this wicked generation is looking for a sign. But I'm not going to give them one, except Jonah. So, when is the last time you read the book of Jonah? I couldn't even find it. I couldn't even find it. It's a tiny, it's a tiny little book. Squeeze between Amos and Obadiah and all of those guys. So anyway, so the point of the matter is I read Jonah. Now Jonah has always, I'm going someplace important. I'm going, some, I'm going to tell you about the father in just a minute. So I'm reading Jonah and you know Jonah has always perplexed me. There's some stuff in Jonah that does not make sense. The guy gets called by God 
to go preach a redemptive message to a, a city of 120,000 called Nineveh, and he absolutely bolts, goes across about as far as away you can get from Nineveh, and he gets on a ship and ends up in, uh, ends up in the belly of a fish for his disobedience. Well, now Sandy and I taught on that for years, and we taught praise and worship out of that. You find yourself in the belly of a fish, you just worship your way out of it. But, but there's more to it than just worship your way out of it, because here's what, here's what happens. He, 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 gets, he does repent. He's in the belly of the fish, and he repents and says, you know, I know you're good, and, and so I'm going to worship you, and he gets vomited up in front of Nineveh. Now, I'm, when I'm reading this, and then he preaches the gospel, he preaches the redemptive, he said, you can avert uh, this judgment that's planned for you if you'll repent. Now, listen, Assyrians were his mortal enemy. They were the mortal enemy of, of the northern state of Israel. They beat them up. They captured them. They were horrible oppressors. And God says to Jonah, I want you to go and, and tell them I'm going, I'm going to uh, destroy them. Uh, and, but they all repented. And, and the punishment was um, dismissed. It never happened. So then, after the, the punishment is dismissed and the, and the city was not destroyed, then Jonah really got mad. He pouted and he said, I'd just rather die. I couldn't, I can't, and listen, now so I'm reading this, I never could figure out, I never could figure out why he was, uh, why why he, why he, you just wanted to jerk him up and slap the snot out of him. And not only that, but then he says to God, for I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God and slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and one who relents concerning calamity. In fact, he, then he really wanted to die and, uh, because, you know, God put up the gourd vine over him and cooled him off, and then the, he shut the gourd vine down, and he got all heated up again. So the second time God came to him, he's really, he really wanted to die. Now, I, I am meditating on all this, and, I, and there were so many questions in my mind about how God responded to Jonah, how, God, how Jonah knew the nature of God. And he wouldn't give it to anybody that was his enemy. That's not a very good prophet. And his name means dove. So here's, here's what I came to tell you. He said, Deanne, that story is not about Jonah. That story is about who I am. Now, when we begin to read the scriptures from the informational point that God wants us to know who he is, he wants us to know who our Heavenly Father is, and he wants us to know that his, in his timing and in his economy, there isn't a right and wrong group of people. The right-wrong gospel is the wrong gospel. It rains on the just and the unjust. His love goes beyond our behavior, goes beyond our associations, goes beyond our culture, goes beyond our nations, and it is absolutely a free gift because it is his nature, not ours. So when we read Jonah and we read the book of Jonah, I just thought, well, I can understand the nature of God. Just X out everything that you don't know about Jonah because that's the, that's the knowledge of good and evil. You have to figure out his intent. You have to figure out why he did this. You have to figure out why he did that. And we don't have to figure out the nature of God. God in his in who he is, he offered that 
he offered life to 120,000 people. Some were so young, they didn't know their right hand from their left. And the animals. He saved the animals, too. So, in this house, as part of our equipping, we're going to come every Sunday. My intent and purpose every Sunday is to talk about the nature of God. And the reason why it's important is because we have the same nature. I think that what has happened in the past, because many were fatherless, many five-fold ministering giftings have been fatherless. Now, we've all joined organizations, and we've all been a part of a group, but that is not being fathered. And I was thinking, I was asking myself, you know, who, who fathered me? I mean, I didn't even have a father that fathered me. And today, as I'm in the Word of God, read your Bible, believe the Word, you can be fathered. And I just want to announce over you that the Heavenly Father is busy at work, and His desire is that we would all be fathered in a new way. So the next time you're reading the Bible and you don't understand some human's behavior, and those prophets are nuts. They take their clothes off. They lay down on the ground. So why don't you just skip over what you don't know about the prophets? Because I always try to identify with them. Keep your clothes off. Keep your clothes Yes. The older they get, the older you get, yeah, you should really keep your clothes on. Anyway, so as I, as I was thinking about it, Sandy, I was thinking that there is a great move of, of fathering that is coming forth from Holy Spirit. And he wants us to experience more, more love, more joy, more compassion, more mercy, more kindness, more grace, and more justice, more righteousness, because we're no longer slaves. We're no longer slaves. We are sons. And when we are sons, he has blown his life-giving hey. spirit into us. Read it. It's in Ephesians 4, 1. Yep. Love it. Okay, so if, you'd, if, if you want to respond to that, you can. You can say in your own heart, I, I know I wasn't fathered properly. I just think about some of these people that, that are ministers of the gospel and they tell about the relationships that they had with great men and women of God. And I just think, what an awesome blessing. And God is raising up apostolic fathers who equip us in the knowledge of who he is and who we are because of who he is. It's practically heresy. Uh huh. Watch it. You might get strung up for that if you say, "As he is, so are we." All right. That's that's what the word of God. That's what the word of God says. Yeah. As I am in Christ, I am a Christ in the earth. Whoa! Better not say that. Better make sure you understand that you're. You know, it's like you have to explain away the most important part of it, which is in Christ. We have that Christ nature. And the more we're equipped in that revelation and in that knowledge, the more that the whole creation is satisfied. I want some of that. I say I want this. I do.